let's have a look at our project. Here, first we will talk about runtime annotation. So whenever we are writing a custom annotation, we will always use a different module for our annotation. This is an Android app project uh, as I'm, I'm working as Android developer. So I'll use this as an example. This is the main module of the app. And this is a separate module for annotation. For annotation, I have declared annotation in, in the Java source package. This is my package where my runtime annotation resides. So we have already discussed its declaration. It it's needs to be shipped at, at uh, runtime. It needs to be applied on fields and it needs to be an annotation. So that's why it has an at keyword at uh, sign before the keyword interface. So that's all what you need in an annotation to be declared as. Second thing is, as we mentioned earlier, that there is some method that needs to be called in order to start processing our runtime annotation. So I have made this static class, a static method to, to start processing our, our runtime annotation. Now, whenever a class that has members, that has fields uh, on which this init annotation is applied, that class has to call this init method in order to uh, to use that annotation in order to make sure that annotation performs and do something. Now, what I get is a parent reference because whenever you are setting whenever you're setting any value to a field using reflection, that setter needs to have a reference to its parent. That's why whenever I whenever you initialize uh, this annotation you need to pass the parent object so that when I'm setting setting that those fields by calling the default constructor, uh, I have reference to the parent. Uh, why am I calling default constructor? Because I've mentioned earlier that, that this is an example and and this this example will will provide us an annotation, will declare an annotation that will that will call default constructor of the objects at runtime objects that are annotated by this annotation. Uh, how we're going to do this is, is going to happen in this class. So there's a private uh, private constructor just to block the initialization. Even if, if you call this constructor through a, a reflection API, it will, throw an it will throw a security exception. Anyway, so the first method to be called here is init method that will pass parent so that I can set the fields. Now, what what I mentioned earlier is that there were three steps while writing our runtime except the runtime annotation. So first step was to initialize. Uh, this is our initializer method that will start the process. Second thing was to get all the references of that object, of that, uh, that class, or all the references of the fields of the, that class that are annotated with our, our annotation. Now, first thing we do is that we take all the fields that are declared in that class. Then we pass that to another method called process field. We pass parent object in that method so that whenever we want to set those fields, set values in those fields later using the reflection, we have a parent object reference. Now, we loop through all the fields uh, as mentioned in our second step of runtime annotation we loop through all the fields and we set them accessible so if a field is private we still can have access to them using reflection what field object is here is a java a java reflection api object uh, that we got here from our parent object dot class to get declare field now for each field, we want to check if this field is annotated with init or not. In fact, if we are calling init in a class, it, it is not necessary that every field of that class is annotated with init method, init annotation. So even if we have all the fields referenced here, we want to check only fields that are annotated with init, we will modify those fields. Now, what we'll get what we will do here is that 
will you will get a type reference to that field what this returns is that class type of that object for example if that field is is a string variable get type will return a string dot class object here second thing i i'm doing here is that calling a default constructor of that type now i i missed to mention earlier that for this tutorial to follow to understand you must have a good understanding of java reflection apis so so all all, all of the stuff we're doing here in in runtime annotation is related is is using java reflection api so if the field coming right back to our 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 discover code set the field if the, set the field accessible if it's private check if it's it's annotated with our init init annotation if it is annotated with our init annotation we need to call a default constructor to it and 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 not only calling default constructor to it uh, we have to assign that object reference to it too so to get the type we call the default constructor and we set set that instance we set that object into that field if that field is a string name then a string a string is got from here and a, and a string equals to new string is called from here and that the reference of new string is assigned to that field which is name so it's it's usually uh, it's 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 something like this if if you have a code uh, written at in it and and you have you have a string in it name so basically what my code what our class what our code here does is that it calls name equals new string so that's what our code is doing. So, so this line of code is what our what our runtime annotation is doing here. So, this is just an example of of, of how you can use the runtime annotations. Uh, let's see how it is uh, it is used in our app. So, I think it's in the test folder. So, I can run the code quickly instead of starting the whole and write app so here is what our annotation is applied to a string and a json object they're both, they, they're both java objects so if i i assert them right here without the init call the init annotation they should be null let's say what happens let's see what happens when when we run this Right now they are with init annotation. I have to run the test only. Sorry, I forgot to mention that we have to run this initializer here. The initializer that, that we wrote here, the class, which will start doing the processing, is, is to be is has to be called some, from somewhere. So in our test class, we we call this initializer in before method, which runs before each test. So we we run the initializer. When this initializer is when this initializer ran. It, it loops through the fields which were annotated by init and it called the default constructor. In, in our case, it looped through this and this and called their default constructors. And as you can see, the all test fields are test fields, test is passed thanks to our annotation. Let's say if we remove one annotation from our JSON object, what will happen uh, now when we run the test? Uh, this time our test will fail. And it will say that JSON object is is found now. Uh, yes, as you can see, that our annotation is working. It says JSON cannot be null, where the J unit expected it to be not null. Uh, we we reapply our annotation. We reapply annotation, 
we call init and we run the test again. Let's see what happens. We pass the test. Uh, let's have a look when what happens when when we do not call init. This will also fail the test because even though we have applied annotations here, we have not done anything with it here, which we which we we uh, which we um, which we wanted to to call is init method here to to perform operation. We did not do here. So this test will fail again. As you can see this time, uh, a string cannot be null. Uh, and uh, I don't have this assertion in, in separate methods. So it fails here and, and never runs to here. If I had this, this call in separate method, we will see the, the errors for both things. JSON cannot be null and a string cannot be null. So there you have our runtime annotation working by modifying objects. We follow three steps. We, we initialized it. We initialized it here, prov provided it through a current environment reference, current class reference. We looped through the field in our initializer class. We called, we modified each field with our requirement as our requirement here, calling an, our default constructor. And we tested here in our test where the both objects were initialized successfully. So that's all for, for the runtime annotation.